Hi guys, today I'm doing a silicone experiment for three different pore paintings. I left the first set of paints alone, put no silicone in them. I'm adding one drop of silicone to each of these colors in the center, and then I'll add five drops of silicone to each of the paints on the far right. Each of these paints has been pre-mixed with one-to-one -one paint to Floetrol, so uh, it's just half acrylic paint, half Floetrol. And then I have two times as much of the black paint in each cup as I do in each of the um, white and the pink cups. So quick, gonna stir these up and then get ready to pour them all into the slightly larger cup because I'm going to be doing a dirty cup pour. All right, so first I'm gonna pour half of the amount of black paint that I've got in each cup into the pouring cup. This will leave the other half to basically kind of sandwich the pink and the white paints. Now when I pour the next color, you'll see I'm going to be pouring as close to the center as I possibly can just to be as consistent as possible because I really want to make sure that when I flip the cups, there isn't one side that's favored over the other for where the colors go. It's just the way I know to do it to make it as similar as possible. So pouring this pink, fuchsia, purplish color uh, in the smack center of this, pouring next the white into the center of each of those. Then I'll come back around with the rest of the fuchsia and the black. Now, full disclosure here, the different color paints you see are actually different brands, but from each painting to each painting, I'm still doing the exact same thing. So, uh, like the fuchsia and the black are two different brands, but I use the exact same fuchsia for each painting and the exact same black paint for each painting. So, the only difference among each of these three paintings is the amount of silicone or no silicone that I added. All right, so now pouring the rest of the black on top just to make that sandwich. You can really pour in whatever order you want. I really like the contrast that the high amount of black has with the fuchsia and the white, so that's why I chose to do it this way. Still doing the same thing for all three paintings, so it shouldn't make too much of a difference. And now that I've got all three cups as identical as possible, barring the no silicone one drop and five drops, time to flip them. You'll see that actually underneath the canvases I have some cut up egg cartons. This is just a fun hack that I've found after losing too too many paintings to tipped cups that I tried to balance my canvases on to keep them from adhering to the trays when they dried. Um, it was a tragic loss and I decided I would stop trying to balance my paintings on cups and I've so far found that Egg Cartons has been an awesome platform to keep my canvases on. Highly recommend this method of saving your paintings that you have spent a lot of time and effort in making. Okay, so time for the reveal. I'm going to be lifting each cup as straight up as possible just to try to be consistent again. Also, super fun, it kind of just looks like um, little records like vinyl records at first. So my plan for tipping them was to tip in exactly the same corner until the paint started to flow off that corner and then basically rotate it clockwise until all of it was covered. And I'm gonna do the same exact thing. You see I'm tipping it towards the bottom left first and uh, until it hits each of those corners and then starts to flow off. So I'm doing the exact same motion for each painting, at least trying to, to get as similar results as possible. Then just let them sit for a bit, right? Let them flow off the edge. And torch these babies. I got a lot of air bubbles appearing from torching. Now the paint is still pretty wet because I didn't tip these guys as much as I normally do with a pour painting, 
just because I wanted to do the bare minimum to be consistent. Uh, but they were dry enough on the edges I could pick them up and put them on a different background. And you can see all these pseudo cells that formed from the air bubbles popping when I torched it. And here's my one drop wonder. I love how this one turned out so much. Um, and then the five drops also turned out fairly similar, but you can see that the cells on the one drop painting actually are much larger. And the cells on the five drop painting are uh, smaller, but more frequent. Still a little bit more drying to do, but overall I love how these turned out. A day later, they finally dried all of the way. And there you have it. Thanks for watching, you guys. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel.